Here's a problem about the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So I'm going to start off with my function big F of x is equal to the definite integral from x squared to x cubed of sine t squared dt. And I want to find big F prime of x, the derivative of big F of x. OK, so on the surface, this is screaming use fundamental theorem of calculus 2, which just says if I had big F of x defined as definite integral from a, a constant, to just plain old x of f t dt, then I can say the derivative of big F of x is equal to little f of x. So just take the integrand and put an x where there was a t. Problem here, we're going to have the limits getting into the way because we don't have a constant at the bottom and we don't have plain old x in either of the slots. So we need to work our way around this using the chain rule. So let's take a look at a slightly different function first that will help us crack this problem open. So I'm going to define g of x to be the function that we would like. If I have g of x equal to definite integral from 0 to x of sine of t squared dt, then I have g prime of x equals sine of x squared. That's what we would have liked to have up there, but we don't. Now, you, if you notice, I can get an x squared up in the top just by putting x squared in for x in the original function. This is a composition. The idea being, I'm just going to stick in where I would have put x, I put x squared, that puts x squared on the inside of the function. So if I take the derivative of big G of x squared, that's just going to give me by the chain rule, I apply g prime x squared, multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. And so here we're going to have sine of x squared squared gives me x to the fourth times 2x. Okay, I'm going to apply that trick again to the same function, only now we're going to do g of x cubed. So let's take a look. Okay, g of x cubed. We're going from 0 to x cubed sine of t squared dt. I'm going to take its derivative, so the chain rule applies again. And now we're going to have g prime applied to x cubed times the derivative of the inside, which is 3x squared. That's going to give me sine of x cubed squared times 3x squared, or sine x to the 6, 3x squared. Okay, now we get to the punchline. How do I bring these two in to get tied up to my original f? Well, we note f of x, I'm going to split this integral up over the regions from x squared to 0 and 0 to x cubed. Okay, I'm not worrying about whether 0 is actually in the domain of my f's or anything like that. I don't really care. The point is, I could find some constant that lets me split the region. Now, we notice my first term here, since I have x squared in the bottom, if I want to reverse the order, I have to introduce a minus sign, and then that's just g of x squared. For my second term, that's just g of x cubed, as we saw above. Now, the derivative of f is just going to be equal to the derivatives of each piece added together. So we wind up with what I just calculated before. g of x squared prime is going to give me 2x sine x to the fourth. We have a minus sign out in front. And then g of x cubed prime is going to give me my 3x squared times sine of x to the sixth. So if you can get through this, you can handle pretty much any second fundamental theorem of calculus problem where they goof with the two limits.